Thank you. Uh, my name is uh, Fredrik Jorsson, and uh, I'm presenting a paper written together with Johnny Pettersson, who's sitting over there. And uh, what I'm basically going to, going to do is describe an introductory course that we give for our software engineers. And this is the very, very first course that the students take when they come to university. And uh, when we started developing this course, we wanted a course that would enable the students to understand the concept of CDIO. Because it's pretty, uh, if you just talk about CDIO, it's not straightforward what it is. Uh, and we also wanted to understand how this is incorporated in the study program that they're actually going to study for the upcoming five or three years. Uh, <clears throat> of course, we want the students to practice conceiving designing and implementing operating, operating in a team-based environment. And of course, we want this conceive, design, implement, and operate to be in the software engineering context. So, they, so the students actually have an understanding, what does this mean in my context? What is conceiving for me? Um, we also want the students to learn the basics in written and oral communication and working within a team. Uh, furthermore, we want the students to start reflecting on the ethical issues of being a software engineer. Uh, many students don't think that there are these issues when you are a software engineer. You just sort of write programs, do software. Um, but uh, I will get back a little bit to that. And um, we also want the students to understand the future profession. What will I be working with when I leave university? So they have sort of a, a picture, they can, they can set a goal, where am I going with my studies? Uh, and of course, start the process of being able to set these goals, to have an understanding what will be required of me when I leave university. Um, so this was sort of what we started. We wanted a course that we could meet all these uh, requirements. Uh, what we ended up with was the following. Uh, this is a five-week course, and this is basically the first week the students ever set foot on the university, and it's the following five weeks. Uh, we decided that it would be a very good idea to have a project-based uh, course. Uh, and uh, what we did was that we uh, introduced the uh, conceive phase of the project, a design, an implement, and an operate phase. So these are basically roughly one week each, a little bit more. Um, and, and we actually control the students. They are forced to do the project in these phases. Uh, what we did more was that we sort of initiate each phase with a lecture. What is conceiving in a software engineering context? What, what, what does it mean? Um, and of course, uh, we, we can figure out all these fancy structures, uh, but basically what controls the students' activities are what we assess. That, that's very much, students are very um, um, logical in that way. They, they sort of want to pass the exam. So in that, uh, to, to, to really sort of make each of one of these steps uh, matter, so we had, we had different assessments. So we have the conceive phase was uh, assessed with a discussion seminar, the design phase with a poster session, the implementation phase with an oral presentation, and the operate phase with an end user evaluation. So these were sort of hard requirements during the project, uh, sort of uh, milestones that the, the project should pass. Now I think I, uh, I will talk a little bit about each one of these uh, phases here. So we start with the conceive phase. Uh, the, the project that we wanted the students to work with was the following. They were given the task to create a game that 12-year-old girls would like. And these are typically males of 19 years. Oh. Uh, <clears throat> they were furthermore given a requirements that the game should be uh, created using uh, a software called Game Maker, which is a very high level uh, programming environment. Uh, and we, furthermore, we had a demand that 
uh, from an ethical point of view, the game should be suitable to launch at a specific website. Uh, it is, uh, it's a website in Swedish which have pretty high ethical integrity. So, so these were sort of the, the boundary conditions for the project. Uh, besides from that, we sort of just say, okay, you solve the problem. So first of all, uh, when we said that we were going to do a game, a computer games, the uh, students were very excited. Because, oh, okay, cool, we can do a programming game, yeah. Uh, but when, then they started sort, sort of, what do 12-year-old girls want? That, that's a, sort of, sort of, we sort of forced them to look beside, outside themselves. They couldn't solve the problem by introspection. They had to actually go out find people to ask, preferably 12-year-old girls, what do you want <laughs> from a game? And they were, they were also, uh, um, they knew that the game in the end would be evaluated by girls. So they, they would actually get a proper feedback, did we do it? Did we make a su successful game? Uh, the lecture on to introduce a conceive phase was uh, we talked about the problem solving, uh, the importance of planning your project, uh, setting system goals, uh, different forms of working together, and how to perform a basic investigation. So it was uh, sort of a mixture. What is conceived? What does it actually do? Uh, and the discussion seminar, uh, we divided the, uh, in the project, the students worked in teams of five or six uh, students, and we made the groups. Uh, and in the discussion seminar, we made cross groups. And in, during the seminar, the sort of findings during the conceive phase was discussed. So each group briefly presented what they found out, what, what does 12-year-old girls like in the game. And other groups could say, oh, we, we didn't find that out. We sort of, so it was, it was a really a discussion seminar. And also they discussed uh, what limitations do the tool game maker impose on the game? Sort of, sort, so they actually had an understanding on, on uh, the frames of the problem. And then we started the design phase. And then we had a lecture on the design process. We had an in-class workshop on creative processes, brainstorming stuff. Uh, we talked about scenarios and persona. So we, we sort of, in, we introduced a way, a structured way to do design. Of course, it's only one lecture, so it's not very, very deep. And the design phase was uh, assessed with a poster session. So each group made a poster where they presented their gaming idea uh, with, with, with sketches and so on. Uh, and then we had sort of um, cross groups, uh, poster presentation. So each member of uh, the team presented the poster, uh, got feedback from other team so, so at the end, they could collect a lot, uh, pretty much feedback from other groups on the design, the, the proposed design. Uh, and we, of course, gave feedback on the poster design that they, the, on the poster that, that they made. Uh, then in the implement phase, we have the lecture of uh, stressing the importance of building exactly what you have specified to build. Uh, we talked a little bit of the importance of testing and uh, we introduced uh, some aspect of extreme programming, like pair programming. Uh, we talked about time boxing to manage your time to actually, when you do the implementation work. And we introduced something called the Pomodoro method. I don't know if it's familiar. It's sort of a very agile, um, method where you, you, you focus on one thing and you work very hard on that for 25 minutes. You do nothing else but one thing in 25 minutes and you have sort of an egg clock that you turn up and, uh, and then you rest for five minutes and then you focus on something else or the same thing for 25 more minutes. So it's a structured way of sort of working. Um, it's not just for implementation but it's a yeah, structured way. Uh, and after the, um, the implementation phase, was, there was an oral presentation and each group had to present their work. Perhaps not just the implementation phase, but every, everything up until that point in a, um, 
during 20 minutes, or roughly five each member of the team should talk about five minutes each. So it's, it's, everyone in the group had to do presentation. And the group were given written feedback from the other groups uh, on the presentation, and a teacher gave individual feedback to each student on the presentation. And of course, we also saw then the, the, the state of the project. Um, the final phase, the operate phase, we had a lecture of the importance of software maintenance, some tips on writing software manuals, uh, how to organize a software support, uh, different type of software errors, and how to handle different types of errors. So this is, uh, and here we also shown uh, to the students the importance of this phase, that this is the, in a software lifespan, this is the, the most important step. And we, we sort of, because this is often sort of skidded over in the, the students are very focused on writing software. They don't see that, okay, someone's got to maintain this software for decades to come, perhaps. Um, and then we had an end user evaluation. So we invited, I think it was five 12 year old girls who uh, evaluated the games. They, they sort of the gaming experience, the graphics, the sound, was it easy to understand and stuff. So they graded it. Um, and we also had a member of staff evaluate the sort of um, the, the gaming idea. Is it uh, possible to sort of expand this uh, to make uh, version two of the game or something? Um, and the group pitched their game idea or, or the game and demoed the game to a general audience. And they also, the pitch was assessed by a teacher. So this was the project that we that the students work with during the five weeks here and uh, this is a half time course in parallel with this course they have an introductory course in mathematics so it's uh, they, they, they actually don't spend I think it was 50 hours per student uh, allotted on the time budget on the project uh, the resulting games this is just a couple of them um, if you want to play them it's on the that website, uh, I think most of them are in Swedish. So, <laughs> but uh, they should be self-instruction. Um, you can pretend it's for your daughter. Yeah. <laughs> but I, actually, I'm, I'm really, really impressed with what they came up with. The first game here is uh, Alice, a little girl here. And she is um, trapped in a world which is uh, no colors, very dull. And she has this uh, color bucket which you can move around in the world and she can throw paint at monsters and they turn into butterflies. And uh, she pulls uh, levers and stuff and the, the, gradually the, 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 there's more and more color in the world. So it's, it's really beautifully made. Uh, this game here is about a uh, rabbit. Uh, you have a water level that rises and so you have to sort of jump between these uh, to, to sort of not drown. <laughs> yeah. Uh, here you're a uh, basketball. And you want to get to the, through the hoops, so you have to push the boxes and sort of control the basketball as it go up. And here you find you should you will find your way through a maze. Uh, so you have to find it doesn't see very well here. It's a key. So you have to find a set of keys and find your way through the maze. And you can also find this light, so so you can see the entire maze. But these are really, of course, they're, they're, you play through the games pretty quickly. I personally think they're very beautifully made. It's very fun to actually play them. Um, so that's the games. Uh, besides from the project, we had other learning acti activities. We had a lecture on um, CDIO and how it's incorporated in the program. Uh, we had a lecture on setting personal goals, controlling yourself, working in groups, uh, the importance of reflecting. Uh, professional ethics, where we sort of provoke the students to understand that ethics is something that the software engineer actually has to deal with. Uh, written communication, uh, and then we had a, a special event where they had met with the software engineers professionals, and oral communication. Uh, and this uh, software, to, to meet the professional, we invited 12 companies, and each company sort of came with more than one people, so we had the ratio, company student ratio to about 
one to four. So it was meaningful for, to mingle and for the students to sort of talk to uh, the professionals and ask what, 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 what do you work with, what do you do when you're finished and stuff like that. And in parallel with the project, the students had to write an individual report uh, capturing the bold face aspects. Uh, and in that individual report, they should discuss is the CDIO syllabus aligned with what the companies want? So they had a sort of um, justification just to, to ask the, the, the companies, what do you want? Uh, and then they should sort of have some discussion of is the study program aligned with the CDIO syllabus? So they have to read the, the, uh, the syllabus of the program and the CDIO syllabus and sort of figure out that, does this match? And is it possible to gain insight in professional ethics during your education? And this was just to sort of make them reflect on what is professional ethics and is it possible to learn that during the education? Just to sum things up, uh, uh, students are happy with the course. Uh, larger acceptance among the students for learning generic skills in other courses. Uh, it was uh, fun to make a game. It's important that the target group of the game is outside the personal sphere. Otherwise, the, the, the idea of the conceive phase sort of goes away. Uh, it was very successful to use Game Maker. And, but when the students realized that they weren't actually going to launch their games at this website, it sort of wasn't interested to, to meet that demand, that particular demand. So, and that concludes our, uh, my talk, our paper. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Just because I'm really interested, I'm going to conduct a little survey about something you said. You said right at the end there that you face your students with the CDIO syllabus and they try and match mm. what they've done against it. How many other people get their students to read and comment on the CDIO syllabus? We don't. <laughs> no, that's why I'm asking. Idea. No hands were well, so I, I tried at the beginning when we first started running CDIO to explain right. what CDIO was and what the syllabus was and, and so on. And I, I didn't get good feedback from the students about it. So I decided to concentrate on what CDIO is without yeah. talking mm. about, yeah. about it. Just do it rather than talk about it. And that seemed to go better. How does it go with your students? Um, they weren't that thrilled about it, <laughs> actually. And I, th I still think it's important because the students see that it's actually sta it's stated there. You have to be able to work in a group. You have to communicate in a foreign language. You have to, I mean, it's, it's, just, it's just not me saying that. It's actually stated somewhere and they can actually go out and ask the companies, is it really that important to be able to speak English? Yes, it is. Okay, so I think it's on the whole. I'm I, I'm going to keep that, but even though the students ah, weren't that, but I think it's an important eye opener. Other questions? Yeah. Uh, they had the, the, the report that was... I think, I think the point you said they were studying maths as well. They said yeah, the math, math, math. Yeah. Maths, yeah. All they're doing. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so they do half time, they, roughly half time they do math. And then they have the project and then they have the individual report and, and some, uh, some other activities as well. Five or six students in each group. I don't know, 40? 50. Ah. Okay, one final question on that. We're over time, so I'm instructed. Yeah. One more. Particularly the lecturing situation is very complicated. You can see that. Yeah. Uh, of course, I mean, when we introduce consumer, we have the project, so you, you can sort of exemplify uh, on the project. Okay, when you do, when you conceive in this 
particular, so you have to understand what, what can you do in Game Maker. That's a part of conceit. What do 12-year-old girls want? What requirements do this um, website have on the games? I mean, this is stuff that the students have to actually go out and find information about. They have to sort of start up Game Maker and go through uh, tutorials and stuff to, to, to learn, to get a feel of what, what, what limitations are there in the tools. I mean, you can, uh, I mean, it's not feasible to design a very elaborate game that you cannot implement in the tool. So, so you have to have an understanding of the limitations of the tool. So th th that was the, and also we stress the fact that they should, in, within the group, decide on how they're going to work. That's also part of the conceive phase, to, to perhaps write a group contract or something. 